Hi, I am Dr. Arsalan Khan. Today we will discuss about the most important chemicals of nervous system, the neurotransmitter. In this lecture, we will categorically describe the neurotransmitters, their composition, their general classification and types, their mechanism of action, synthesis, storage and elimination of neurotransmitters, and how the neurotransmitters transfer the impulse from one neuron to other neuron in the nervous system. So first of all, we will define the neurotransmitters. These are the endogenous chemicals of the nervous system which transmit nerve impulse from one neuron to other neuron passing through the synapse. These are basically endogenous chemicals. This means that these are produced within the body. Within the nervous system these are produced, therefore this is called endogenous chemicals. Basically neurotransmitters are aimed to transmit the nerve impulse from one neuron to other neuron. For example, these are the two neurons. This is the exon ending of one neuron and this is the dendrite ending of other neuron. So basically nerve impulse and nerve message is transferred from the exon terminal of one neuron to the dendrite terminal of other neuron through a gap. This gap is called synapse and neurotransmitters do this job. By crossing the synapse, these neurotransmitters transmit the information from one neuron to other neuron. So uh, most of the neurotransmitters, these are made up of amino acids. As far as its discovery is concerned, the neurotransmitter, the first neurotransmitter was acetylcholine. It was discovered by Otto Loewi in 1921. He was a German scientist. He discovered the very first neurotransmitter acetylcholine in 1921. As we have discussed that the neurotransmitters are required for transmission of nerve impulse, the nerve message all nerve information from one neuron to another neuron. This is the transmission site. There may be three transmission sites in which the neurotransmitters are required for transmission of nerve impulse or nerve messages. These may be from one neuron to another neuron. As we have discussed earlier that uh, the neurotransmitter, the chemical messenger, it basically picks up the information from one neuron and transmit it to the another neuron through a synapse. This is called neuronal conduction and if the nerve impulse is transmitted between neuron to muscle cell for purpose of contraction of that muscle this is called neuromuscular junction and the third transmission site is neuron to gland for the purpose of secretion of hormones for example a nerve impulse is transmitted from a neuron to the pituitary gland for secretion of vasopressin growth hormones uh, adrenal gland for secretion of epinephrine, norepinephrine, etc. So the transmission sites may be of three types. These may be from neuron to neuron, these may be from neuron to muscle cells, or these may be from neuron to glands. The purpose may be different, but the mechanism is same. This is synapse. Synapse is the gap or junction between two neurons, or more specifically, it is the gap or junction between exon terminal of one neuron and then right terminal of other neuron. This is called synapse. Synapse comprises three components. This is called presynaptic neuron because it is um, before the synapse. So this is called presynaptic neuron. This is this gap is called synaptic cleft. And the third one, third component is the postsynaptic neuron. There are three components of synapse presynaptic neuron, synaptic cleft and postsynaptic neuron as I have mentioned in numerical manner in the diagram. Synapse may be of two types, the electrical synapse or chemical synapse. Uh, electrical synapse means when the distance between these two neurons is less than 20 nanometer or it ranges between 2 to 20 nanometer, then the nerve impulse, nerve imp information can depolarize the next neuron spontaneously without helping without getting help of any other chemical messenger or uh, helping agent. This is called electrical synapse where the nerve impulse can depolarize the next neuron spontaneously. And if the gap is larger, larger than 20 nanometer, then the electrical stimulation is insufficient to depolarize the next neuron. In this case, we need chemical messengers which can transmit information from one neuron to other neuron 
through this gap. Such chemical messengers are called neurotransmitters. The chemical synapse is again divided into two types, type 1 and type 2. When the neurotransmitters crossing the synapse are excitatory in nature, these are called type 1 synapse, excitatory. It means that the, these are supposed to bring stimulation and when the neurotransmitter crossing the synapse are inhibitory in nature, this synapse is called type 2. It means they are, they are supposed to stop the nerve impulse transmission. So there are two types of chemical synapse, type 1 and type 2. As we have discussed, the neurotransmitters are mostly made up of amino acids. So here see the synthesis, storage and elimination of these neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are basically synthesized from amino acids. For example, dopamine neurotransmitter is made up of tyrosine amino acid. Histamine neurotransmitter is made up of histidine amino acid and so on. These are mostly synthesized from amino acids. Storage is concerned. So basically, there are sac-like structures called vesicles present in the exon terminal of the neurons. These sac-like structures, the vesicles, contains neurotransmitter molecules in them. So this is the storage. Sometimes there are neurotransmitters which are not stored in the exon terminal. These are instantly synthesized for their functioning. For example, certain gases are there. Carbon monoxide or nitric oxide. These are the gaseous neurotransmitters. And these can't be stored in these vesicles. So these are instantly synthesized during the nerve impulse transmission and perform their function. When the neurotransmitters have accomplished their task, then these are left in the synaptic cleft. So prevent for the purpose of prevention of continuous nerve stimulation, these neurotransmitters must be removed from the synaptic cleft. And this is called elimination of neurotransmitters. So there are three ways for elimination of neurotransmitters in the nervous system of human body. First one is diffusion, then enzyme degradation, then it is recycling. In diffusion, there are certain cells in the nervous system uh, called glial cells or neuroglial cells. These, these are not important or required in the nerve impulse transmission. Rather, these are required for metabolic and physical help of the neurons. These are supportive cells to the neurons. For example, uh, we can say astrocytes or Schwann cells. These are neuroglial cells. These do not conduct the nerve impulses Rather, these help the neurons to conduct their nerve impulses. So these are called neuroglial cells. Neuroglial cells, these are required for the elimination of neurotransmitters. For by the process of diffusion, these neurotransmitters are captured by these neuroglial cells and the cleft, synaptic cleft is cleared off from these neurotransmitters. In second way, there are certain enzymes which break these neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft. For example, acetylcholine neurotransmitters, the most notorious neurotransmitter, when it is left behind in the synaptic cleft, is spontaneously, is immediately degraded by acetylcholine esterase enzyme. So acetylcholine esterase enzyme comes here in the synaptic cleft and clear up all the acetylcholine left over in the synaptic cleft. Third way is recycling. In this method, the exon terminal of this neuron recaptures, reaccumulate these neurotransmitters into the vesicles and again recycle, reutilize in the next conduction of the nerve impulse. This is called recycling. So these were the three important phases of neurotransmitters, synthesis, storage and elimination. Now we are going to discuss the mechanism of action of neurotransmitters. Uh, as far as mechanism of action is concerned, the neurotransmitters present in the vesicles in the presynaptic axon terminals. This neuron just before the synapse is called presynaptic. The neuron after the synapse is called postsynaptic. So in case of presynaptic neurons, the axon terminal comprises certain vesicles which are carrying these neurotransmitters. When the nerve impulse arrives at this neuron, these vesicles come close to cell membrane of this exon terminal and then 
the vesicle rupture releasing the neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft. And then these neurotransmitters reach the receptor sites of the dendrite terminal of the postsynaptic neuron. This receptor site collects or these neurotransmitters bind to these receptors and cause depolarization or hyperpolarization which we will discuss later on and transmit the nerve impulse from this neuron to the next neuron. This is the conduction of nerve impulse from one neuron to another neuron through the synapse by means of chemical messengers, the neurotransmitters. Basically, this type of conduction depends upon this receptor whether it is excitatory or inhibitory. In case if it is excitatory in nature, then this neuron, this neurotransmitter will bring depolarization. Depolarization refers to the change of cell membrane potential from negative to positive. It means that normally a neuron is negatively inside, it is minus 70 millivolt inside. So when the neurotransmitter, excitatory neurotransmitter comes here and bind to the receptor of dendrite, then it causes influx of sodium. Sodium is positively charged. So when influx of sodium starts, it means that the sodium ions move into the dendrite, into this neuron and make it more positive inside. So it becomes positively charged at plus 50 millivolt. This is called threshold level at which the nerve impulse is transmitted. So this is called repolarization when the neuron become positive from negative by the opening of voltage gated sodium channels. The sodium influx causes this neuron to get depolarized and hence the nerve impulse is being transmitted. If this neurotransmitter bind to the receptor of inhibitory nature, then hyperpolarization occurs. Hyperpolarization means change of membrane potential to more negative. So for example, it was minus 70 millivolt. So it will cause more negativity by opening the, I'll show you in the diagram. So when this neurotransmitter, these neurotransmitters bind to the receptor of inhibitory nature, then it causes influx of chloride ions rather than sodium ions. And these chloride ions, basically these are negatively charged. So it will cause more negativity inside the neuron from minus 70 to minus 100 or onwardly. And it will change the membrane potential, this cell membrane potential to more negative for the purpose to inhibit the action potential threshold. So that threshold should not be maintained and the nerve impulse cannot be transmitted. So in inhibitory uh, neurotransmitters, the chloride influx is there which cause hyperpolarization and in excitatory neurotransmission, there is depolarization due to the sodium influx. This was basically the mechanism of action of neurotransmitters. It depend upon the receptors of the dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron to which the neurotransmitters are going to bind. If these bind to the excitatory receptors, sodium influx will occur the depolarization will occur and the uh, neuron inside becomes more positive and the nerve impulse will be transmitted at the threshold level and if these neurotransmitters bind to the receptors of inhibitory nature then the chloride influx will occur the chloride channels will open more chloride will shift inwardly causing it more negatively charged beyond the threshold level so that nerve impulse cannot be transmitted and this, in this way, the nerve impulse will be stopped. This is called inhibitory neurotransmitter. Now we'll discuss about the general classification of neurotransmitters. There are more than 100 neurotransmitters which are discovered in the human body, but these are described are divided into few classes. These classes are first one is peptides. So these neurotransmitters which contains peptide bonds are these are proteinaceous are opioids, endorphins, oxytocin, vasopressin, somatostatin. The amino acids composed neurotransmitters are glutamate, GABA. Glutamate, glutamate is the most prevalent excitatory neurotransmitter present in the human body, while GABA, aminobutyric acid, GABA, this is the most prevalent, most common in inhibitory neurotransmitter of human body. 
Others are glycine, serine, and aspartate. The biogenic amines are monoamines comprised dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, serotonin, and histamine. Acetylcholine, the most important, the first discovered neurotransmitter, is made up of acetic acid and choline. Other neurotransmitters are basically gaseous, which we have discussed earlier, nitric oxide and carbon monoxide, which are instantly produced and execute their task. These are, so this was all about the neurotransmitters. In our next lecture, we will uh, complete the functions of each and every neurotransmitter written here, or which we have uh, referred to. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you have found this video valuable and informative. Thank you.